Hello and welcome to the third event today at the Corbridge Chamber Music Festival and we're delighted to introduce for his first appearance at the festival our composer in residence Piers Hellowell. Tomorrow afternoon at three o'clock you can join us to witness Piers stranded on a desert island where he'll choose some of his all-time favourite chamber music. But today he's here to introduce his own works these range from the kind of richly scored, lush orchestration of the work you heard which introduced this programme to the intimacy of the chamber music world, where he feels particularly at home as a composer. So it's a great pleasure to now introduce Piers Hellowell. Thanks, Rob, and thanks especially for this chance to share some recordings of my own work here. Let me reciprocate by starting with the work that you and I created together, uh, Agricolas for Clarinet and Orchestra. So here's one that Rob and I made quite a bit earlier. <laughs> That was the opening of the concerto that I wrote for Robert Plain over a decade ago. It's the main work on my Delphian CD, Airs Waters, which appeared in 2012, the first of two discs on Delphian that contain much of my recent work. Agricolas is the collective name for a set of sculptures by the American artist and sculptor David Smith. Smith was a metal worker, a welder by trade, and the sculptor's Sculptures tend to be metal and designed for the outdoors. Um, each of the Agricola's pieces tends to a kind of design where separate metal objects of different shapes and sizes is suspended off a central rod or axis. Um, I wanted to do something rather similar with my piece. I wanted a series of diverse movements of different shapes and uh, sizes musically um, to be sort of held together by a central thread. And I also, at the end, gave the piece a rather lushly scored epilogue in which the solo clarinet uh, takes its farewell.
The disc also contained works of solo piano and a chamber work, my piano trio Etruscan Games. This work was a part of a very treasured collaboration with Fidelio Trio, although it wasn't actually written for them. The gist of the work is that th three movements involve uh, solo slots in which each of the players shows off, uh, and then in the fourth movement they all come together um, more communally. But um, the idea of this was uh, to show off individual members of any trio. Let's take one in particular, the violin. Uh, if you heard my Harris Island discs, you may have heard Dara Morgan playing some Feldman on the violin. So let's pick up with him again here. <laughs> I sometimes use outside ideas or titles to reflect on the shape of the music, as in Agricola's. I think titles for new music can be a kind of a tricky issue for listeners anyway. What I was doing with the Etruscan Games was to reflect really on um, the nature of the musical expression. Um, the idea was that the games are the struggles or the, the kind of uh, competitive showing off of the players in the successive movements. The uh, Etruscan part of it relates to the ancient Etruscan language, which uh, we no longer can understand. So I was kind of acknowledging that the listener watching this um, tussle might not know all the rules of the sport that is being spectated. Um, I do like that sense of a deepening acquaintance with a work of art as we get to know it. And I do invite the listener to, uh, to kind of spectate things that maybe take a while to explain themselves. When the album Airs Waters came out in 2012, only one of the works was written that would get onto its successor, which came out early in 2020. This was a disc called Up By The Roots. Uh, that uh, oldest piece of that was a 2009 piano work called Piani La Tebre, a piano solo in which I tried to get to grips with the difficult um, fact of writing for an instrument that you play but not well enough to play what you're writing. It's much easier for a composer when you don't play an instrument at all um, but you know I play the piano up to a, a limit, a very uh, obvious limit and the piani in the title refers to layers, layers of activity so that in the writing there are different things going on, it's quite rich and dense and the la tebre are metaphorical hiding places um, because I was thinking that the piano has many well-trodden uh, ways, paths through the forest, as it were, and the La Tebre are hiding places of expression that I hope to uncover that are uh, outside that uh, normal practice.
The wonderful pianist there in the third of the Piani La Tebre pieces was William Howard. All the artists on these discs are collaborators of mine and uh, close friends, but William and I go back uh, a lot further, in fact, to the 1980s. That's very private music, or I hope it is. Um, but of course, at the other end of the scale, there's the large orchestral piece, the kind of big statement. I wrote Wild Flow for the BBC Proms uh, for 2016, and it's a suite of disjunct pieces, hence the title. In the second, I was trying something very new, which was an exercise in discontinuity. I think I wanted to write a piece which appeared to be constantly changing its mind about where it's going. I was thinking of one of those child's toys that when it hits an object, it kind of flips over and keeps going and moving in another direction. Um, and as a result, this is a mad intuitive piece that takes off at various tangents. I don't think it's like any other of my music to date. The Wild Flow title, which relates to the whole work, could be quite a good description of this movement. So the Ulster Orchestra was conducted by Paul Watkins there. As well as being a thrilling conductor, Paul is one of our very greatest cellists today, and my disc contains a tribute to that as well, uh, a duo called Atria, a suite of pieces that I wrote for Paul and his uh, piano virtuoso brother, Hugh Watkins. The Atria, or hallways, are some of the main movements in this suite, and the idea is that they become longer, or in musical terms, I suppose, longer and deeper in expression, as if one were going into a building, but also underground as the chambers widened and expanded around us, so that the innermost chamber, which is the last movement, is the one in which the cello can really sing. That was Paul Watkins and Hugh Watkins in Atria. Actually, the newest work on this disc, Up By The Roots, 
is a piece called Ground Truthing, and it uses the same idea. There are three pieces which form an expansion, uh, rather as if we view uh, an object in the distance, like a wall or a mountain, and we start to walk towards it, and instead of seeing the whole thing, we start to see features of surface in more detail as we lose the wider perspective. It was written for my wonderful colleagues, the Hard Rain Soloist Ensemble in Belfast, and as in any piece where you combine wind and strings in a chamber setting, there's a lot of uh, kind of uh, conversational jostling between them. That was from Ground Truthing. The one work that we haven't heard is the title work on this disc, Up By The Roots. This features Fidelio Trio again, but with a guest. I teamed up with the renowned poet Sinead Morrissey, who in three poems meditated on the theme of human migration, which is such a huge issue uh, as part of our time. Sinead reads these poems as part of the piece, but while the music and the poetry stay apart, separate for a while, gradually the bounds start to break down and the pieces take a migration of their own uh, until the words and the music are interspersed. In this closing episode of Up By The Roots, uh, a forest has swallowed up both the newly arrived migrants and their predecessors, uh, the previous occupants of the forest, who are not that pleased to have new arrivals. And the hubbub... Uh, awakes the forest goddess Baba Yaga in the poem and she turns all the participants into wild deer who scamper away into silence. And but for the sudden flash of their backs. <laughs> the sudden rush of their skitter. As they reel off into the trees, isolate and undone, to disappear. It's quiet here once more. A shuttered shop. A lake with no one on it. And sweet sleep. Takes me in its mud. and let me drop.